Welcome everyone, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different due to me not being able to actually make a top 5 tier list for flanks. Flanks is really, really strong right now in total, but there's also some really bad ones. And I, I physically could not get to a best flank. There's so many good flanks right now, such as Buck, Eevee, Lex, Koga, Seven, Jin, Vatsu. There's no, none of these characters are the best character in the class. And none of them are really like fifth or fourth or third. They all are really interchangeable. And each one is getting picked or banned every game. And there's not one that's consistently being played or banned or really seeing like much play at all. There's just so much. Um, there's so much interchangeability that I'm just going to go ahead and make a tier list today of the flanks with uh, just what I've seen through ranked and through picks and bans, stuff like that, through other higher elo, low elo, everything in between. Just going off of what I've seen and what we've seen in the past. Because some characters didn't receive any changes. And then they also didn't benefit from any of the items. And actually got hurt by the items. Or got nerfed or buffed. And so let's go ahead and just hop into the tier list. I may, I went ahead and made one already. And then we'll just go ahead and talk about each character individually. Let's get into it. Alright, so I did order these in some way. But just because Buck is at the top, I don't think Buck is actually the best flank in the game. I think it is completely situation dependent. In most scenarios, Buck will do just fine, if not some of the best out of all of the characters. But I don't think Buck is actually the best. Buck is very strong, considering it is a very hard dive meta. Especially with Torvald, you're able to completely enable Buck to absolutely run the entire team. He does amazing, very hard to kill, really good lockdown with Snare, and with Bounce House being as strong as it is and his cards being really strong, Buck is an absolute menace and very tanky. The issue with Buck is when it is a very long range, whether they have snipers or just really high mobility, that's when he can really lack in damage output because they're able to just keep their distance and then he doesn't have as much long range damage because of his fall off. That's the only downside really to Buck. I don't think he is the best fling of the game. I actually don't think there is a best fling of the game, which is why there is nobody in best in game. Uh, but Buck is still very strong. If you're really wanting a reliable flank to pick every single game, go Buck. He does you just fine. Does great. Um, Eevee is at number two. Again, I don't think Eevee is second. Actually, I think she's probably lower than this in terms of general relevancy and actual skill, uh, like, um, good. Like, how she, how good she is right now. But I think considering in most scenarios, you can pick Eevee and do just fine. Uh, she's at number two on the tier list. Does great, is able to pull a lot of valuable cooldowns, especially when we're playing in a meta where stuff like Furia is a uh, meta. You can really go in, try to force Pyre Strike, and then TP back since you're running, I would assume you're running Wormhole, her best talent. Uh, does a lot of burst damage, able to really kill people and lock down people really quickly with uh, her ult, and then just has a very hard to kill mobility and very good uh stuff like ice block just to be able to pull cooldowns be completely safe and then get out for completely free she is very squishy and can be easy to kill if she isn't it, she can be really easy to kill if she's not running wormhole and she's absolutely free for the most part if you're playing in comms and you just call it evie just blinked then she usually dies um but for the most part evie does a lot of damage and a lot of lockdown with her ultimate very hard to kill when she's running wormhole and just absolutely incredible character right now Next is Lex. Lex just does a lot of damage. A lot of reliable and consistent damage. Able to really hit headshots really easily. Ultimate's really good for confirming kills or getting uh, spread out kills. You're able to stagger really easily with it if the rest of that team just died. And then you see that last person is out of position or they're just sitting somewhere. Then you can go over there and kill them really quickly with just a couple autos and then ult them. And then they're staggered and then you are still in a 5v4 and you're going to probably win the point or the push. Very good character uh just overall reliable and really good damage I, I think lex i've seen banned like i i don't know how many games i played in the last few days probably like 30 to 40 and he's been banned a good quite a like probably 25 to 20 games he's been banned or picked very reliable character seeing quite the good play rate so i assume he's doing really good um i don't really play flank but i do have friends who play flank and obviously i just go off of what i see in ranked so very good character definitely be picking him really reliable Koga is next. Now, Koga is in the Dragon's Fang meta. We are no longer in the Adrenaline Junkie meta. But Dragon's Fangs, it's really good. Very high burst damage output, especially when you're running Pierce, or since the Claws have Pierce. In Dragon's Fang, you do 650 on top of your dash, doing, I think, 700. And you just pop Claws, do a bit of damage, and then dash through. And then you're doing, like, incredible burst damage. Um, and yes, burst damage. It's not really, like, overtime damage. You just do a couple Claws and then uh, dash through. And they're dead most of the time within two seconds. 
It's an incredibly good character. Really reliable. He does kind of lack outside of uh, Dragon Stance. But even then, his um, his uh, SMGs still do quite, a, quite good damage. But for the most part, you're just spamming Claws. And you're doing really good. Character's really good right now. Next is Seven. Now, Seven got a lot of buffs. And it actually took me a lot of time to see how good Seven was. Until, like two days ago i don't actually know when season seven dropped i forgot but until two days ago i didn't see seven being picked or banned once not a single time but in the last few days i've seen seven banned every game and picked every game that he isn't banned and with mag dumping meta death hands being cheaper his cards being really solid tribunal smg being really good i think that's the talents card or talents uh name really good talent especially for mag dump uh, meta right now incredibly good character extremely high burst with the buffs that he got to both burst smg mode and magda mode absolutely incredible character just does a ton of damage really hard to kill especially with the map rotation with bright marsh and split zone quarry both being some of his best maps able to get the, over the map really quickly incredibly hard to lock down still a really good ultimate too that fear can really change the gate tide of a game that's really good right now make sure you're picking seven especially if you're getting onto bright marsh or split zone quarry Make sure you're picking this character. Character is nuts right now. Next is Jin. Now, Jin is in very strong because I do think he can match some of these guys' damage output. He can definitely lack sometimes, but he just overall does consistent and reliable damage. Has a really good flank, really hard to kill with both reverse and um, his whirlwind or whatever it's called, his dash, and then also billow. He just has three ways of being able to not die. Does really solid. He has a oh me be mediocre role for the most part his ult's actually not that good uh but in a tank meta where you can sometimes get away with running guillotine you can maybe get a few cheeky picks off but for the most part you're not running guillotine you're running yomi uh but the character's okay still in very strong because flanks overall are just really bloated right now it does a shitload of damage and can you lock you down if you do get an ult off but for the most part you're gonna die in your ult um, very hard to kill high damage that's why it's in very strong and then Fatu, for the same reason, you just do a lot of damage and hard to kill with three dashes and an ambush. You ambush on them, kunai, shadow bomb, kunai, they're dead. And then you go ahead and dash out and wait for cooldowns to come back up. Envelop enveloping shadows is really strong. And yeah, the same reason as Shin, basically. High damage output, really hard to kill, especially on most maps under an orientation. There's some maps where he can struggle on. I think like Dawn Forge, where he just can't get through uh, both stories really reliable enough, and then you can get caught out really easily. And... There's just stuff like that, very niche cases, but for the most part, the character does do really well. On to Vora. This is the average tier. Now, Vora, at the beginning of the season, all the way up until, like, today, honestly, I thought Vora was the best flank in the game. She was being picked and banned, and then all of a sudden, she just fell off, and I wondered why. But I didn't really stop to think that they didn't buff any in anything else in Vora's kit. It was just her base autos. And so she still has to run uh, Tendril Talent, where she gets double Tendril. Meaning, sh without this, you were literally just a setting duck 90% of the time. Her ult's still really bad. It only gives you mitigations and speed. Obviously, that's what you want. But you're only using that ult for the mitigations and movement speed. You're only really using it to live. If you're using it for kills, you're honestly kind of wasting the ult. Because now you really have no survivability. Usually, you just tend your louts and ult in the midair. So you can actually survive. But without it, you don't. And everything else with her uh, shift or whatever her um yeah her shift i don't actually know what the ability is called and then her obliteration both of them just don't do damage like they don't obviously they do damage but they don't do that much damage she still struggles to really do much without just her basics so her dive isn't that good because she has no burst damage besides some of her autos doing a lot of damage and then has no survivability outside of a talent making her very mediocre does okay on most maps you can usually pick her and do just fine but i think vora was a little bit overrated at the beginning of the season and i think people are starting to see that she is just very average very good buff so got her into a decent spot i don't think she needs any buffs and i think the flank class overall is really bloated as you can see more than half of everybody is in very strong this class is like jin and vatu both don't even really have reasons to be very strong they're just extremely hard to kill with a high damage output and i think for a flank class that is a big issue where all of these characters should be easy to kill but do a lot of damage and i think that should be the identity of flank instead of being hard to kill and do a lot of damage output and i think that's kind of the damage class and onto the flanks and i think they just mix them both and they're doing a lot right now anyway that's enough of me rant ranting let's go ahead and keep going 
uh, Andro, same thing as uh, uh, Vora. She can die a lot, especially with some of the uh, damages in meta, such as Leon. Uh, very can be very easy to kill, like Drogos. Um, or similar to Drogos in the way that they just pick hitscan and you're dead, especially since you're going to be sitting in the air a lot. Does meh damage, meh survivability. Uh, reverse can do some damage. But, yeah. Just, he's a very meh character. Average, pick him in most games and you'll do just fine. Maps where he'll struggle on would be like Dawn Forge and close maps, close close range maps, etc. Where the hit scans can just kind of eat you alive. But other than that, do just fine. Average character. Uh, Maeve is... Maeve's in a weird spot. I think she can potentially work in most scenarios, but her damage output is really unreliable. Before Cat Burglar got nerfed, she was really good, but after that, she just is unreliable compared to every other flank. I actually think Maeve would be fine if all the other flanks were nerfed, but since Maeve is underperforming compared to the other flanks, then she obviously doesn't do that great. And Cat Burglar is mediocre, but it's still her best talent. Street Justice just isn't that good and is very unhealthy talent when it is good, but it is just very not good right now. And it's only good into some tanks. And Rogue's Gambit doesn't really get value right now because she doesn't have a lot of damage output and isn't able to, sec to secure any kills because she has zero lockdown and no damage output if you run Rogue's Gambit. So you can't really be getting pounce uh, resets and then it's like, okay, what's the point of running Rogue's Gambit if I can't be getting kills because I'm not resetting pounce very weird state for her right now but i think she can work in some scenarios where you're playing against a really squishy team maybe they only have one tank then you could run mave and she would do just fine uh but overall just very weird spot uh talus talus does good on controller and only on controller if you're on pc this character just struggles if you see a talus you turn around and you kill him if he dashes or if he runes back then, oh, well, he raised it his rune, and now he doesn't have rune, and now he's a free kill. And if he goes on a flank, you know he doesn't have rune, and then you just turn around and kill him again. Very unreliable damage output as soon as you put him on PC. On console, obviously, he's good. If he, you know, if your console, probably best in game, if not very strong. But we're not talking about console meta. We're talking about overall game meta. And I think just because of aim assist uh, existing, I don't think that makes a character good. Overall character, like, um, actual goodness, I don't know how to put it. Like, how good the character is in terms of general balance is very meh. Turn around, kill a character, and he's completely useless without rune travel. And other than that, just meh character. If you're on aim assist, obviously, you pick this character and you'll do just fine. But other than that, meh, could work on most of the time. Maybe even average. Maybe I'll put him in bottom of average after um, really thinking about it. He can work on most things. You can pick him and do just fine in most scenarios. But um, just as soon as people learn to turn around and just kill him, then he doesn't really do much. I just realized I forgot Sky. I'll put her up here whenever I get to the end. Now, Moji, I think it's in very niche because I think there are some scenarios where she can work, especially if your last pick flank and you see that they have a ROM or a Yak, any beefy um, tank that doesn't really have any like survivability that can are really just standing still. ROM, Yag, um, Ruckus, stuff like that, where you can just eat through them. They have no external survivability, external by meaning like shields or other forms of protection outside of their base health. I think those are scenarios where emoji can work, but other than that, just very, 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 very niche. Most of the time, you have to play completely perfectly to make this character work, and uh, even then, it's still a bit of a struggle. So yeah, I think this character is very niche, can work in some scenarios against tanks like Ruckus, Rom, and Yag, but other than that, no, don't be playing this character. Caspian after the nerfs, absolutely terrible. Honestly, I think it's a throw pick right now. You just don't get any value. You have no lockdown. You have no dive you really don't have any burst either uh your ult got nerfed quite heavily i think his ult's fine still i think it's one of the better parts of his kids but he just doesn't do much damage and especially in a meta where you're hard diving it's just very unreliable you have a slow instead of a stun you have no lockdown uh his dashes are still fine ever since they unlocked them so he could just fly but even then they nerfed his uh love gun i think it is and so he can no longer just shoot one per bullet and it's two per bullet they nerfed both of his good talents and now you're basically forced to run his middle talents since the other two are just awful. No burst damage, no range with your war gun, your war sword. And it's just very, very rough for Caspian. I think he's in a very bad spot. Almost, I think he is entirely useless. Kasumi, if you guys don't know me, I am a complete Kasumi main. But this character is awful. In most games that I play, I do just fine. I'll drop 
bombs and it's perfectly fine character when you know how to play her can do just good but the general balance of the character is just bad this last patch actually was a nerf for her and i don't think a lot of people realize that except for the people who actually played kasumi they just nerfed her for no reason they gave her jump pipe which was cool and can work sometimes but for the most part that mitigation nerf was incredibly bad she needs mitigations body and soul because other than that you're just dying and body and soul um i mean i did tinker ruckus ult earlier but that was like it was a one-time scenario where i also had a bit of heals on me but other than that like this character just got an overall nerf in the last patch and even then i think at best before this patch she was in very niche if not top of absolute terrible but now she's just in the bottom they nerfed her unfinished bitches so it wasn't a good talent anyway you were really always running haunted grounds or empowered curse but um they nerfed unfinished business for no reason they just nerfed a bad talent already and yeah they just overall nerfed the character gave her one small buff and thought that they needed to completely nerf every other part of her kit she still has no range her yokai doll trap still does nothing unless you're running haunted grounds um yeah very bad character this character needs a bit of love so anyway that is my list oh yeah i forgot sky um i would say sky is very niche if not potentially could work i'd put her above emoji i think sky is just very outdated you look at every single character in this game and they have some sort of mobility and sky doesn't very outdated character really easy to kill it's, it's similar to emoji where you just turn around as soon as you see her you hear the audio for hidden you know she's around you just track her and she's a free kill i actually think she's probably worse emoji she doesn't really do much she can get picks sometimes but that's very niche scenarios and i honestly think emoji is a better character i don't think sky's very good yeah that's my um that's my list i don't think i missed anybody else just looking through it real quick yeah doesn't look like i missed anyone else if i did miss anyone let me know in the comments below and uh if you guys like the list let me know in the comments your thoughts on it what do you guys feel about the meta right now? How do you guys feel about Seven? I don't know. I still don't know how to feel about Seven and Vora. I think Seven does just fine, but let me know. Drop a sub and a like if you enjoyed, and drop a dislike if you don't. Uh, it always helps out. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow with the damages. Might be another tier list because damages are also no good spot, but uh, hopefully it will be a top five. So I'll see you guys later. Peace out.